Greetings everyone, this is Mr. Mall. Today I'm doing a podcast on some simple force diagram examples that are going to help you with that first worksheet. So I'm going to go ahead and get started with a couple simple problems. Uh, the first one we're going to look at a block that is suspended from a string. So what I like to do when I start any of these problems is I need to figure out what objects are in my system that can do pushing or pulling because those are the, the objects that are going to be contributing to a force diagram. So I'm going to look and I see that I have a string, I have my block, uh, underneath here where we can't see it is going to be the earth, and that's really it. I mean if, if it says that there is, uh, I'm like uh, in a really windy environment or something, uh, we, could, we could have the air out here, um, but for here we're going to assume that, that the effects of air are negligible. So I'm going to look at my block, and it's at rest, uh, hanging from a string, and I'm going to look at my block as my system. I'm going to draw a little dot representing that block. So now I need to look around and figure out some objects that are doing pushing or pulling. Um, so I look and I see the earth is pulling on my block, so I'm just going to put an earth here. And then I'm going to look and see what other objects are attached to the block. and someone is holding this thing up here. Um, there's something suspending this string, but be careful. I don't want to put hand because the hand is not in contact with the block. The only thing that's actually in contact with the block is my string. So my string is going to be that other force, okay, the force from the string. Now we call the force from a string or a rope, we call this tension. Okay, we call that force from a string or a rope, um, kind of like the, kind of think of a string as kind of like a, a, a stretched out spring. And if I pull on that spring, okay, the, the, the rope wants to, to pull back in towards the center. Okay, so this force of tension is always going to be pointing uh, in the direction of the string. You're pointing in the direction of the string. So there's my tension force. Um, because my acceleration is zero, it's at rest, these are going to be balanced forces. My object's not going to be accelerating. Okay, the block isn't going anywhere. Let's go ahead and check out another example. Uh, let's look at a block at rest on the table. So here's my table. Down here is my earth. Uh, and we have our block. So I'm going to look at the block. And I want to draw a force diagram for it. So I look at the block and I notice that a, touching the block is a table. And the reason why the block is not continuing to move towards the earth is that the table is in its way. So the earth is still pulling. But that table is there pushing back on the block. Pushing back on the block. How much is it pushing back? Just as much as the earth is pulling it. Okay, so the, the uh, table is pushing back, pushing back at that surface, okay, at the surface. And notice that in relation to the surface, that push, okay, if I were to draw a dotted line for my surface, if I were to draw that dotted line, that force the surface is going to be acting perpendicular too perpendicular to the surface. So we call this force that acts perpendicular to the surface, uh, we call this the normal force, which is just a geometry word for perpendicular. Okay, normal force. And because the acceleration is zero, it's not accelerating, these forces are balanced. So another example. Uh, a block at rest on a whiteboard. So now I'm looking at this block here. I notice that I have my whiteboard, I have the earth down here, and here's my block. So what I need to do is I need to look at this block and I need to figure out what forces are acting on it. So I'm looking for physical objects that can be doing pushing or pulling. I know that the earth is pulling towards its center, earth. But what I'm going to do is because this is at an angle on my force diagram, I want to draw that surface again with a dotted line to show me, okay, there's the surface. So I have this object, but it's at rest, so I know my acceleration is zero. My forces must be balanced. So looking at the surface here, 
the surface is now at an angle. Okay, it's at some angle here. Some angle we'll call it, uh, you know, some angle theta. But the whiteboard is still going to be pushing perpendicular to that surface. So I'm going to draw this here. We call this our whiteboard. And this is acting perpendicular. This is going to be our normal force. A normal force. We still have a normal force. It's kind of like a support force. Think of the normal force as a support force. So there's my normal force. And then keeping the block from sliding, if I didn't have any other forces right now, overall, um, those two forces are kind of pulling the object kind of down the rampish. So we need an object that's, that's preventing this sliding force. And the only object around to do that is the whiteboard. But it's preventing sliding, so we call this type of force a frictional force. Friction. Okay, it's going to be a force that's preventing our sliding. Okay. And that friction force is going to act always parallel to the surface. Okay, so normal forces always act perpendicular to surface. And then our friction force always acts parallel to the surface. Okay. Um, all right, we have one more example. Uh, and there's some, some more fancy footwork at how we could do some components with these, but I'm not going to do that right now. That would be a save for the next video. And then the last one, block sliding to, the slot, to a stop. We're going to go ahead and look at, we have our ground here. Okay, this is part of the earth. Here's our block. And uh, we're going to assume that air resistance or air friction is negligible. And I'm going to draw for my block here. And we're going to assume that this is a frictionful, not a frictionless surface. Okay, sliding through a slot. So I'm going to go ahead and draw my force diagram. The earth is pulling it down. The ground is uh, pushing it back up, keeping it kind of supported. Um, and we're going to call that our, our normal force. And then we're going to call this our earth pulling down. Uh, and then right now, these forces vertically, the object is not accelerating in the vertical direction. So those are going to have to be balanced. Um, however, the object is sliding to a stop. It's accelerating. Okay, So horizontally or um, parallel to the surface, here's my surface, the object is accelerating. So I'm going to go ahead and look and see if I'm sliding to a stop, which way does friction act? Well, if friction to act to the right, my object would be accelerating to the right. But friction is, because this object's slowing down and its velocity is moving to the right, my acceleration has to be the opposite sign. We're slowing down. So my acceleration is going to have to be the opposite sign. That force is going to have to push back the other way in the opposite direction. So this is a force from the ground, and we call this our friction force friction and these uh, uh, this acceleration is not equal to zero the object is slowing down so the acceleration vector is going to point in the same direction as that unbalanced force okay, so this is going to be our, our force diagram for this one um, I hope that this was helpful this should help you with some of the ideas from worksheet one uh, and I will see you next time